Hello everyone, welcome to yet another session of the daily news analysis by Sri Ram's IAS, where we take up the important articles from the Hindu newspaper and break them down for our understanding from the UPSC examination point of view. So let's start today's discussion by taking the important articles from the newspaper and let's take up the first article of the day. The first article which appears in the newspaper reads, West Uttar Pradesh turns hotspot of the cattle disease. Now this cattle disease is the lumpy skin disease which we have also discussed earlier and we had seen in the earlier discussions as to how the states of which are prevalent in their cattle population that are Rajasthan and Gujarat face the wrath of this lumpy skin disease and now even the West UP region is facing the problem of cattle uh, disease, this lumpy skin disease. And the next article beside it which appears, pasteurized boiled milk safe, avoid raw produce and indigenous vaccine to be rolled out. So this particular article becomes important. So we'll revise the discussion on the lumpy skin disease, what exactly this disease is. And the new information is that the vaccine for this disease is will now be rolled out by the uh, authorities. So we'll take a look at that vaccine and it becomes an important fact with respect to our prelims examination. So this becomes important with respect to our general science perspective from prelims and also features in GS3. So what is the lumpy skin disease which appears in cattle? It looks like this, where the cattle generally develops lumps in, in the skin and uh, which are accompanied by high fever and uh, a lot of other problems in the cattle. So what are the causes when we say that lumpy skin disease is a disease uh, which is uh, ca causing the cattle to also die in a lot of cases and also certain other problems. So this is a viral disease. It is caused by infection of cattle or water buffalo with the pox virus that is the lumpy skin disease virus. So it is a viral disease. That's the first fact which we need to know and according to the Food and Agriculture Organization, the mortality rate is less than 10%. So the mortality rate, even though is not uh, projected to be that much, a lot of number of deaths have been seen, where in the Gujarat in the last few months saw the deaths of close to 6,000 cattle. So uh, these states are facing a lot of damage and we know that when the cattle are dying and they are facing diseases, so a lot of economic damage also take, takes place where the milk production of these cattle uh, goes down. They are uh, more number of, uh, more money needs to be spent on their, uh, one, ca one can say, uh, uh, recovery of the disease. So all of this is causing a lot of economic damage to the uh, ca cattle rearers as well. And this lumpy skin disease was first seen as an epidemic in Zambia. So it has originated in Africa in uh, 1929. Initially, it was thought to be the result of either poisoning or hypersensitivity to insect bites. But later on, it was found that it is basically a virus that is infecting the cattle. So what about the transmission now? The lumpy skin disease is primarily spread between animals by biting insects. So this means that this is a vector bone disease. What are vectors? Vectors are those organisms who carry the pathogen. So uh, the mosquito carries the pathogen for malaria and dengue, uh, the flies carry the pathogen for cholera. So these are the vectors and such vectors also carry this fox virus uh, that is the lumpy skin disease virus and they bite the cattle and that is how they transmit it to the cattle. But the important fact that we need to notice is that it is not a zoonotic disease which means that this won't be transferred from the cattle that is animal to humans. So it does not spread from animals to humans and humans cannot get infected with it. So that is the safe part where is this disease is not zoonotic. So this also becomes an important uh, fact for us to know from the prelims examination whenever a question pertaining to this can come, right? So now what are the symptoms? What are the major problems which the cattle faces? So it primarily consists of fever, fluid excretion from eyes and nose and dribbling of saliva from the mouth and blisters on the body. These are what the blisters we saw in the photo. So these are the symptoms which the lumpy skin disease carries, which is accompanied by fever, fluid uh, secretion from all uh, areas and blisters on the body. 
and the animal stops eating and faces problems while chewing or eating resulting in reduced milk production. So that becomes a part of the economic damage which the cattle rearer faces. And then what about the prevention and treatment of the disease? So earlier when we had discussed this, we had seen that only normal uh, treatment mechanisms were available to this where if the body is getting uh, blisters, anti-inflammatory medicines could be given for fever, fever uh, reducing medicines could be given. But now uh, the vaccine for this same disease has come in and it is known as Lumpy Provac. The, that is the name of the vaccine. The Lumpy Provac vaccine has been indigenously developed by the National Research Center on Equins, which is located in Hisar, Haryana, in collaboration with the Indian Veterinary Research Institute located in Izatnagar, Bareilly. So these two institutes together have developed the indigenous vaccine known as Lumpy Provac. So that also becomes an important fact to know. And the vaccination against these diseases is covered under the Livestock Health and Disease Control Program of India. That is the larger ambit of the mission program of India, which covers vaccines not just for the lumpy skin disease, but all the other livestock health and uh, other diseases which are uh, connected to the livestock and cattle. So this is the new development with respect to the vaccine that has been developed. And the next uh, prevention which has been given under the article is that raw milk from the cattle who is infected from the lumpy skin disease should not be consumed as it can be harmful because the bacteria can be uh, from the cattle that is being contracted with the lumpy skin disease the bacteria can be com coming up in the milk as well and that can be harmful that is why raw milk should not be consumed but boiling it or pasteurizing it after that the milk can be consumed. This is what the directions have come from the authorities with respect to the steps that should be taken in terms of preventing the lumpy skin disease from spreading. So this was our discussion with respect to this article and with this let us move on to our next article for the day. The next article which appears in the newspaper reads, Kerala passes bill on the Loka Youth. Now this is an important article which features in the newspaper which deals with the Lokpal and Lokayuk system. There is a concept called Lokpal and one is the Lokayuk. And what has the, the article is talking about Kerala passing an amendment bill with respect to the Lokayuk. So through this article we will take a pri, uh, overview of what is Lokayuk, what is this whole concept and what has Kerala passed a bill on. So this become <coughs> important from us, for us from the point of view of GS2 where we study the aspects of polity, right? So let us get into this. What do we mean by Lokayuk or Lokpal? What is it? One is Lok Lokayuk and one is Lokpal. Basically, these are the terminologies given to those authorities or those personnel who will be instituted in the government or in the executive to check the actions of the executive, which means that those actions which can amount to corruption so to check anti-corruption activities in the executive, there would be a specific body in the executive as well. These bodies are generally known as ombudsman or anti-corruption authority. These are the name given to these particular agencies. So Lokpal is the national ombudsman who would be the uh, authority to check the anti-corruption activities at the national level and Lokayuk is the same authority at present at the state level. So these are the Lokpal and Lokayukt and they were, how they came into about, uh, we'll see that. So this is Lokpal, Lok, uh, Lokayukt is an anti-corruption authority or ombudsman. Ombudsman again is a term who is the authority to check the actions of the government and official appointed by the government to represent the interests of the public. And what does it do when, when we say that they are there, there to check the uh, anti-corruption activities? So it gets the power to investigate allegations of corruption and maladministrations against public servants. So those people from the executive who are not performing their actions well or are indulging, indulging into acts of corruption, the Lok Lokayukt will have powers to investigate and prosecute these people. And it's tasked with speedy redressal of the public grievances. So how did this uh, come about? So the first is the Administrative Reforms Commission headed by late Morarji Desai in 1966 
recommended the setting up of the institution of lokayuk and we also know that a major uh, agitation in the year 2011 was led by anna hazare uh, activists such as anna hazare and other people uh, spearheaded this movement and also called one of their major demands was for the uh, promulgating the local lokpal act so consequently due to these factors and other factors the lokpal and lokayukt act of 2013 was passed in the parliament which is commonly known as the lokpal act it was passed in the parliament in december 2013 this is how the lokpal and lokayukt act came into place wherein it gave a whole system as to how the lokpal would be established in the na uh, national level and lokayukt would be established in the state level what would their qualifications be who would be appointed how would they be appointed what would their powers be all of it is in a uh, and enumerated in this act so it provides for the appointment of the lokayuk to investigate and report on the allegations or grievances relating to the conduct of public servants and as i mentioned it also called for establishment of lokpal at the center so our focus from this article is the state authority that is the lokayuk so what about the lokayuk going into it how does the lokayuk function and what does the act say on the lokayuk front so since the act was passed in the parliament it said that the states now have the responsibility to establish these lokayuk bodies in their respective states so section 63 of the lokpal and lokayuk act states that every state shall establish a body to be known as the lokayuk for the state and if not so established constituted or appointed by a law made by the state legislature so it gave the state the mandate to establish the authority on its level named as the lokayuk and it will be created to deal with complaints relating to corruption against certain public functionaries within a period of 1 year from the date of commencement of this act right so these will be the powers of the lokayuk however the law is a mere framework leaving it to the states to decide the specifics this is where the a uh, discretion part comes in for the states wherein the lokpal act only gives the state to uh, gives the state the mandate to establish the lokayuk but what the specific powers would be that the states are free to decide for themselves this is where the kerala has amended its lokayuk act which will see what are the changes and given that states have autonomy to frame their own laws the lokayuk powers vary from state to state on various aspects such as tenure and need of sanction to prosecute officials so therefore various provisions for the lokayuk differ from state to state now if you talk about the majority of the states deciding on how the lokayuk would be appointed or who would be appointed so generally the lokayuk is a former high court chief justice or a former supreme court judge and has a fixed tenure where each state can be deciding the tenure for themselves then how is the selection done the selection of the lokayuk is done wherein the chief minister selects a person as the lokayuk after consultation with the high court chief justice so for each state the chief minister selects a person in consultation with the chief justice of the high court the speaker of the legislative assembly the chairman of the legislative council if there is a uh, uh, one in the state leader of opposition in the legislative assembly and the leader of opposition in the legislative council if there is one in the state and appointment is then made by the governor so this is how the process goes wherein the chief minister selects in consultation with all these dignitaries and then the governor appoints the lokayuk and once appointed the lokayuk cannot be dismissed or transferred by the government and can only be removed by passing an impeachment motion by the state assembly so the removal needs to be taken care of because if one has to give the required amount of independence and protection to lokayuk to perform his or her functions so the removal process needs to be rigid and this is why he cannot be dismissed or transferred by the government and can only be removed by passing a impeachment motion which has to be done in the respective state assembly this is with respect to the lokayuk system in the states now what is the kerala issue what is kerala doing Kerala has passed an amendment act to its Lokayukt uh, state Lokayukt act and what is it saying what are the proposed changes the Kerala cabinet has recommended the governor uh, recommended to the governor that 
he promulgates the audience that's the uh, or ordinance that's the first change and this proposal sought to give the government powers to either accept or reject the verdict of the lokayukt after giving an opportunity of being heard so this is the significant change that kerala has done wherein the whatever report that the lokayukt gives whatever verdict that he gives the government is reserving the power to either accept it or reject the verdict that is given by the lokayukt so this creates a certain uh, an increased uh, amount of discretion with the government where earlier it was the, the verdict of the lokayukt was binding on the government but now it is liable to either accept it or reject it and therefore by this ordinance the quasi judicial institution will turn into a toothless advisory body how will it do so because er, earlier if it was binding and now the government can either accept it or reject it chances of government rejecting uh, verdicts which are detrimental to the government itself increase more and that is why it decreases the power of the lokayukt whose orders will no longer be binding on the government and this is why the opposition is kerala in, in kerala is opposing this move and opposing the passing of this amendment this was the whole discussion on the kerala uh, amendment of the lokayukt act issue and with this let's move on to our next article for the day the next article which appears in the newspaper reads telangana tops inflation charts at 8.32% now this is an interesting article featuring in the newspaper which talks about inflation uh, inflation but more importantly it talks about the spread of inflation in various states of india now we know about inflation that what is inflation it is the general price rise in the goods and services in 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 the economy right so when we uh, what what we call mehngai in hindi that is generally known as inflation so with respect to inflation we know that the government and rbi had set up a limit of 6% which meant that the inflation in the economy should be should not be more than 6% but currently the in, uh, inflation is much above 6% the retail inflation if we talk about and the article comes in and says that yes the inflation is above 6% but we need to look at the distribution of this inflation level wherein there are certain states which are doing less than the number uh, the safe number of 6% and then there are some states which are showing higher inflation levels so which are which are those states and what are the reasons for this uneven distribution we'll try to see uh, from this article and this becomes important for us from the perspective of gs3 so let's take a look at it which are those states which are showing higher inflation level so telangana together with west bengal sikkim are reporting inflation level above the nation's 6.8% so these are the states telangana west bengal which is showing 8.06% and sikkim which is showing 8.01% are the states which are showing high inflation level than the nation's average level then a dozen states are clocking a median inflation of lower than 6% and other 12 states are averaging over 7% by way of uh, 2022 thus far which means that in the up until the 7 months of 2022 there are half states 12 states which are showing inflation level below 6.6% uh, and other 12 are showing above 7% so this is the uneven distribution which are the states which are showing less than the national average so states like kerala tamil nadu punjab delhi karnataka are these states which are showing less than the national average or showing less inflation than the 6% safety mark right and then which are the states which are showing inflation levels higher than the national average so then these are apart from what we saw telangana west bengal and sikkim the other are maharashtra and haryana madhya pradesh assam uttar pradesh gujarat and jammu and kashmir and rajasthan this can be better depicted in this map where we see that the states shaded in orange are showing the inflation level above the national average so which means that these states are showing higher than 6% and select few states so the southern states as we saw uh, chatisgarh odisha and states of punjab himachal pradesh and haryana are showing less than the 6% average mark 
this is the distribution. Now what are the reasons that these states are showing? So the variation within the state's inflation ch changes is especially on account of two components. Now what are these two components? What would be the reasons why one state is showing higher inflation level and other is showing less? So one reason for this is being said about the production of the grains. For those states who are producing their own food, uh, food products or grains will show less inflation because the transport cost is not attached as compared to those states which are want which are being uh, having to import food grains the transport cost for them would be attached so one is the meal cost therefore the place non producing states have increased inflation as transport costs have got added this is the first reason and second is that some states have lowered gas costs whereas others didn't this is also a reason where some states have been able to give subsidy on the gas costs which has lowered the uh, cost of LPG cylinders for them, right? So this has also resulted into the uneven distribution. And then another reason is that states which have extra rural areas than city areas have faced a better inflation as the agriculture section of the client value index has a better weightage for meal prices. So those states which have more rural areas have shown better performance as compared to those states which have less rural areas have and have more city areas. So these become the components which have decided the uneven distribution of spread of inflation rate in the various states. So uh, we finish the discussion on this article over here and with this let's move on to our next article. The next article which appears in the newspaper reads Supreme Court to hear the EWS or the economically weaker section quota petitions on September 13. Now, this is an important step that the uh, new Chief Justice of India, uh, Justice UU Lalit has taken that he has instituted a five judge bench for the issue of deciding the constitutionality of the EWS quota. So in this aspect, we will take a look at what is this EWS quota and how does it become important and what is the Supreme Court going to decide upon. So what is this EWS quota? Most of us know about it. The EWS quota is nothing but giving reservations to the economically weaker section. So earlier the reservation was given on the ground of uh, social oppression. So it was given to SCST, OBC, it, it was based on the caste basis. But this was the fresh round of reservation introduced on the level of income inequalities. So 10% of reservation was instituted for the EWS quota it, and it was introduced under the 103rd Constitution Amendment Act in 2019 by amending Articles 15 and 16. These are the articles which deal with reservations in public uh, education and public employment. It was inserted in Article 15 sub clause 6 and Article 16 sub clause 6. So this was the additional reservation given to a class of people based especially on the income criteria and known as the economically weaker section and it is for economic reservation in jobs and admissions in educational institutes which were known as the economically weaker section. Why was it done? It was enacted to promote the welfare of the poor not covered by the 50% reservation policy for the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes and the socially and educationally backward classes. So it enables both center and the states to provide reservation to the EWS of the society. This was the amendment done. But this amendment also met with a lot of protests and objections which said that the ground for doing the, or granting uh, reservations economically were not very sound and a lot of people and even the Supreme Court raised questions as to the method, methodology of deciding which people or which class of people should be decided to be the EWS category. So there were certain questions which arose and this is why the Supreme Court has now instituted a bench and will decide on, these, uh, on, on this issue. So what will Supreme Court decide upon? So first of all, the first problem which comes in the case is that in the Indra Sahani judgment, which was given in 1992 by the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court in this judgment expressly gave a limit, a ceiling limit to this uh, uh, reservation which said that a nine judge bench in that case put a cap of registration of uh, uh, reservation of 50% which meant that 
50 50% uh, reservation is the upper limit for which reservation can be given in any uh, position and above 50% the reservation cannot be given and by the e coming of the EWS this reservation was breaching the 50% mark which is why it become problematic and this would be the first question that the Supreme Court would be dealing with and then if this EWS quota breaches, breaches this limit without even putting this issue into consideration that is the uh, issue which Supreme Court will be uh, dealing upon and the criteria used by the government to decide the eligibility for this reservation is vague and is not based on any data or study. As I mentioned even this was the ob objection so Supreme Court will be taking up this issue as well. This would be uh, this is a developing news again and as in when the hearing comes and what uh, verdict comes on this issue we will take it up for further discussion. So with this we finish our discussion today for the important articles and we meet again next time for the uh, discussion of the important articles from the newspaper. Thank you.